As we see the reptile hobby shift towards naturalistic and even bioactive enclosures, it's becoming more and more desirable to try and grow plants alongside our reptiles. Now more than anything, getting the lighting right is really what's going to make you see the greatest success with your plants, the best growth, the best flowering and so on. Now in today's video what we're going to be doing is taking an in-depth look at what is possibly one of the very best lighting solutions that you can get for plant growth available on the reptile market to date. I will just get it out of the way in saying that the first of these lights that I've got was actually sent to me free of charge so that I could do this with you. Um, but I will say that I have not been paid at all in any way, shape or form to say anything good about these lights. So what you're getting in the rest of this video is just raw data and my own opinions. So let's get into it. Looking at the skylight tiny, the first things that you'll probably notice is just how neat and clean the design looks. Um, it's a complete plug and play kit. You don't need any of that like hefty ballasts that you're going to need for fluorescent lights. Um, you're not going to need any heavy ceramic fittings that are going to weigh down a mesh top. And you certainly don't need any of those awful canopies that look like bead boxes sat on top of your enclosures that are going to eventually kill the LED by um, making it trap itself within its own heat, which LED lights do not like. Taking a closer look at the details of these lamps, you'll see that because they have such a thin and sleek design that they're just completely unobtrusive and compact and they honestly are not an eyesore. Lots of lighting is like not very nice to look at, produces good light but it's just kind of an eyesore when you sat there trying to admire your plants you've got this great big hulking thing on top but these are not like that at all. They're really nice, small, compact and they just go well with any nice vivarium. Another thing to note about them though, which is a bit of a downside, is that the legs, which the sort of like acrylic legs I think, um, you do have to fit them yourself and they are quite flimsy, so there is a chance that you're going to break these, but you are provided with spurs, so honestly the benefit that you're going to get from them looking as good as they do really is worth them being that thin. An actual technical bonus of them being like sleek like this is that they do lose heat really really rapidly and versus other plant growth lighting that you'll get they actually do stay quite cool so you aren't going to end up creating an accidental hot spot like you do with other um, plant growth lights and the other great thing is that this keeps them alive for longer. Now as I alluded to earlier LEDs do not like heat stress whatsoever and because you know, they produce their own heat. In some cases, this really does do for the lamp, but because these are so thin and they just shed that heat straight away, they're gonna live for ages. Another thing that I and probably you will love about these lamps is that they actually, like, you don't have to get separate plugs for each one you get. Now, both of the sets that I've got are actually tiny doubles, so there are two of them in the set and so there is a two-way split cable, meaning that I don't have to have two plugs just for two tiny lamps. Now, you can actually have up to eight of these lamps joined in conjunction, which is enough, according to their own data, to light 150 1.5 meter long vivarium by 100 centimeters tall, which is a really good size. In fact, that's actually bigger than Char's enclosure, so, it just shows you the power of these lamps. Saying that though, I kind of personally would like to see the split go further down into the like main cable bit because they're kind of close together and so you can't move them very far apart. Although to be honest, if you get like an eight way split one, well, you're gonna like be able to move them eight times further apart if you get anyway, if you get me. So it doesn't really matter too much, but it would be something nice to see. On the point of size, another thing that I really love about these lamps is how low wattage they are. I think each one's just 6 watts, so like if you've got 8 of them, 8 by 6, 48 watts, to light all the plants in an enclosure bigger than reds or bigger than chars, that's amazing. <laughs> I will mention actually that there are actually two different types of the Skylight Tiny um, and that is the RH and the RV. Now the RH, the H stands for horizontal because they're more dis they've got like a wider um, angle, the like spread of light that they produce versus the RV which V stands for vertical which has a more narrow beam and the reason for this is that respectively they're for use on more horizontal and vertical vivaria. 
The ones I've actually got are the RHs, and they are on vertical vivaria, which I suppose doesn't make much sense. But the reason for this is that neither of the vertical vivaria have got a particularly tall, and so it kind of would be overkill. Now, if you're wondering what which of like the RV or the RH you would want for your tank, then there's a link at the top of the description box which you can check out, um, and that's like the PDF of all the data about these lamps, and it does tell you how many lamps and what type you're going to need for what vid you've got. Now, there are all the sort of pros and cons about like the lamp and its functionality, but the real question is, do they work? And the answer is an absolute firm yes. The Lime Dega Covivarium that I've got, um, which is set up in November, I think, um, has just been lit with these lights apart from like a heat lamp and like a little Diddy UV lamp. So basically all of the plant growth that I've had in that vivarium is just down to these lights, just 12 watts, and um, hence the name Tiny I suppose, um, 12 watts of lighting and you can see it's absolutely phenomenal right the way from the bottom we've got that Magravia going in well and we've got the Pilea around some little weed things I've got growing they're all nice and um, the Nirigelia bromeliads up at the top or Nirigelia however you want to say it um, aren't blushing too well although like a few months ago they were absolutely purple all over I actually think the reason for this is that the Lime Vega goes kind of poo on them a lot and there's like a sort of no matter how much you spray it or wipe it or whatever there's always a sort of film over it because don't ask me why they like to sit in it and poo on it all the time so I think that's sort of blocking out the light reaching the leaves probably anymore but it does really help them blush anyway one of the unique things about these lights though is that they were actually designed for use on the very glass tops. Now this is kind of interesting because I do use one on top of my Trusty Geckos with now. Um, it's another double unit that I bought myself because I was that impressed with the previous lamps. Um, but I thought before doing this review I'd see if they'd work well on mesh tops. And as you can see they do work on mesh tops. The plants underneath are growing absolutely great and they look fine. Although I'd definitely say that there is a noticeable difference in how well they work on the glass top versus the mesh top. This brings me to the sort of technological downside to these lamps, which is that they are made up of like LEDs that are like reasonably spaced far apart. Now the problem with this is that LEDs do create a very, very relatively narrow beam of light, so it just like jets down right underneath it. Now what this means is you can create like sort of narrow beams of light that are hitting the plants um, and that isn't particularly usable unlike if it was like a flood of light where, where it's like covering the leaf uniformly they'll grow much better in that. Now this is kind of why I think they work better on a gla glass top. Um, I mean they've designed with the spectrum in mind to like cater for what is extra filtered out if you like by the glass. But the glass itself acts as a sort of lens where it like spreads the light out. If you think like water, if you're lighting, lighting an aquarium, um, it doesn't matter if you've got LEDs on an aquarium and they're dead spaced apart because as the light reflect, refracts through the water, it gets spread out evenly and it's a similar effect with the glass versus if you've got it over a mesh top or even just the way this doesn't happen. And this means, I think, personally, this is why I believe they don't grow as well, um, the plants don't grow as well when the light is suspended above a mesh. Overall though, the difference isn't really that noticeable and there's still fantastic lights whatever the circumstance. I imagine now that you're probably wondering how much of these lights like to buy because they are that good. And honestly, they're actually really quite cheap. Um, I think they start at about like 40 quid or something, 40 pounds sterling, um, not dollars. <laughs> um, don't know the cost in dollars, you probably have to work that out. I'm going to guess it's going to be about starting at 50 or something. But anyway, moving on, um, as you like get more, so if you get the double, I bought the second double I've got for 60 and then as you move up and up and up and you get more they get better value for money and honestly that is about as good as you're going to get when it comes to plant growth LEDs. So overall I am really incredibly happy that I actually got the opportunity to review these lights because it has hope, uh, like opened me up 
to using Skylight products because Skylight's like a dead small company that not many people know of and I only sort of came across it by chance so I'm really happy that I got the opportunity to try out one of their products and that it was as good as I expected. These lamps in summary are like really really good and um, they've got a lovely colour to them like they do have like separate red chips but you can't really make out any red tint to the to like what you see in the viv it just looks pure white it's really crisp and when my animals go underneath that light you can really see them in the full glory the plants obviously as i've said grow really well and i am also very pleased on how long these lights look like they're gonna last being leds and the special light like, heat removing design of them because they're so thin and again they look really unobtrusive and just melt into the top of the vivarium just in the way that they look. The only cons like I say is that if you've got a vivarium with a mesh top they aren't going to perform as well as they would with a glass viv and as well as this it would be nice if the legs on them were like pre-fitted in so you didn't like this breaking them and also if the splitter cable split further down so that you can move them further apart but they are really small cons for what you're getting and especially for what you're paying. Given that I haven't tried every single plant growth light on the market, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that these are the absolute best lights you can get because generally in life there's always someone or something better. But out of the plant growth lights that I have tried, these definitely are right up there. Now if you want to snag yourself some of these lights as well, which I would really recommend, um, then do check out DMS Viveria, um, because that is where I've got both sets of my lights from. Um, and I'd also like to thank both Skylight and DMS for sending me these lights to review, and also DMS particularly for getting them to me, um, allowing me to buy the second set I suppose, and also sending me the line Deico Viverium, um, which I will be reviewing again in the future. Now then, if you want to see more videos about keeping reptiles in naturalistic and bioactive vivaria, as well as see more product reviews that are going to help you do this, then do subscribe to the channel and I'll hit you with some new content soon. As well, don't forget to hit the bell um, and make sure you set it to like all notifications to make sure that you never miss an upload. Anyway, I've been Joe with JTB Reptiles and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!